Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning, I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This uh, memorable scene in the first reading of the complaining Israelites is certainly much more understandable if one visits uh, the Holy Land and sees the, the desert that they're going through and really just the general terrain that they were traversing. And it doesn't take long to get weary uh, in a journey, especially when you're in the desert. It is true they had special graces of providential protection. For an example, they never got sunburned. Their clothes never turned to tatters. and Presumably their shoes never wore out. God did provide for them food from you know, the heavens, water from the rock. But nevertheless, they still had to do the physical journey. And as someone who's led a much smaller group than a million people, just 40 or, 40 or 50 at the very most, you know, it doesn't take long when people start complaining. I want to sit here. Um, I don't want this kind of food. Um, you know, you're, you're not ready. Or, you know, all sorts of things come up. So imagine this many people. And among them was a foreign element of about 600,000. And so with this whole, um, whole thing going on, the complaining to some degree is understandable. But biblical grumbling is a sign of unbelief and a weakness of faith and really a, a loss of faith. And we hear it again in John chapter 6 when the uh, disciples left Jesus in Mass. We might ask ourselves, where does our weak and weakening faith lead us to have a sinful complaining? Some complaints are legitimate. Some grumbling is probably justified when people aren't doing certain things or doing misdeeds. But when we, in a sense, complain against the Lord or just complain about life and not approach it with deep faith, where that faith could be had, where that faith could be had, um, we might ask ourselves, well, what do we need to do? Well, very simply, Jesus is telling us, keep our eyes fixed on him, on the great I am, and he who can overcome anything. Perhaps you've uh, heard about this new movie released or being released, I don't know if it's been released yet, called Breakthrough, of a young uh, man, actually two guys, fell through um, some ice, uh, an icy water body, and uh, two of them were submerged. One was able to save himself, and he was literally dead for an hour. And he didn't believe in God. Now, he was a Protestant kid, and his, he was an adopted child. But his mom was a believer, and she, and she prayed fervently, and other pastors and uh, Christians, I don't know quite all the details, but his pastor was there being interviewed. And they prayed fervently, and he came back to life. He came back to life. And our Lord is telling us, unless you believe that I am, you will die in your sins. That's the worst kind of death, more than dying in freezing water and dying the physical death. And so we have to pray 
that many other souls come back to life. It, there's still some Lent left. We have over a week left. Are we interceding for people who are dying in their sins, who don't believe that Jesus is the I Am, that is the pre-existent God from all eternity? Remember, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is Jesus, the Son. Are we praying for those people and ourselves, asking for strength for the journey, so we are not an occasion of other people complaining, sinful complaining, or having a weakening faith? Are we kind of a blessing to people so that their faith is increased and strengthened and not a, a, a um, you know, weakened in some way. I think we have to do that because we all have our deserts to cross. We all have either periods of time or certain days where we just feel spiritually wearied and we want to complain. But that doesn't mean we have to complain. That's a choice. So Jesus, who always does what is pleasing to the Father, speaks words of eternal life for us today. What will we do? Let's ask strength to cross our, our desert, but also to help others cross theirs, and that all may come to faith in Jesus, who is the great I Am, the eternal God. Let us do our part to trust in Him. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. 